JD. Cheers. So many uh, have asked me if, if I will speak English, but I will do because I know that there are uh, people in this room from our neighboring countries. But uh, I, I definitely encourage you to, to ask questions. Any language will suit. Um, as Eddie said, uh, the title is Cloud Washing. Uh, anybody knows what it's all about? It's like brainwashing when somebody tells you, washes your brain and tells that you need this and that and, and that. And I'm sure that I assume that majority in this audience are from uh, government organizations and larger uh, enterprises. And I'm, I'm fully aware that many, most of you get some cloud pitches almost every day. And my goal today is share some basic truth about cloud from my own experience, from the experience of our company. And uh, the most important slide actually is the last one. And I hope to get to this slide somewhere in the middle of presentation to comply with Eddie's uh, request. So, but before we go into my slide deck, uh, keynote speakers asked what, what is data all about? Why data is important? Why are we talking about data-driven economy? And uh, my take on this is, again, from the experience w working with various customers, when you don't have data about your company, when you don't measure exactly what's happening in your company, in, in your institution now, in country, it's like you don't have a, one sense. You know, every human has a few senses, like touch, like uh, hearing. And it's like, if you would be blind, I will not try this. I encourage you not to try this at home. But if, if you would be blind, if you would close your eyes, and if you would try to walk down these stairs, it would be a very slow motion unless you want to fall. But when you open your eyes, when you have this data, when you know exactly how to optimize your movement, where to place your uh, you know, step next, then it's much smoother. And to some extent, my experience tells that it's difficult to predict what data will give you before you embark on this journey, before you get to get this data. For, and I, I can show you an example. We have a customer who didn't previously did any you know, automation, uh, uh, mobile force code automation stuff. Um, and we did solution for them. And they have mobile workforce working around here in Riga. And only when they saw real-time data, exactly where their employees are, exactly what they do, what, when they can optimize routes they take, only then they opened their eyes and then they were able you know, to tell where to go next, how to, what to do next with this data. But seeing is believing, and I encourage you to, to um, embark on, on, on this data-driven path. But getting back to where my slide deck is, okay. Yep. Um, some of these will be basic truth stuff, okay, until the last slide, I, I believe, but nevertheless. What is cloud? Anybody? Yeah. No personal data. I will get back to, to this, uh, this issue as, as well. I mean, Let's not do cloud washing, even though my title is cloud washing uh, for this slide deck. I, I don't want to do fancy stuff, but I, I want to explain what I believe cloud is all about. And it's like modern electricity supply. I don't need to ask my utility company in advance if I want to you know, switch on a light in, in, uh, in my room, okay? I just you know, flip the switch and it's on. I don't need to ask electric, you know, electricity supply comp utility company when I want to switch another light in another room. So it's elastic to a certain point. Of course, if I will try to switch on a, you know, a seesaw, a very powerful one, then probably I will get a problem, but to a certain point. And it's metered for consumption. I don't need to prepay basically anything if I 
flip the switch, I pay for it. If I don't flip the switch, I don't pay for it. And these, th these things are primary things I ask myself when somebody tries to sell me cloud. And uh, the way I try to explain cloud to, to people, to you, if these three are present, to me it's a cloud. They all, all of them don't need to be present to get value, but if they are present, then this is a true cloud to me. Yeah, and what are few things we tend to misunderstand? even us, even technology people. Security will be in privacy one of those. One thing which, is, which pops up very commonly, cloud is virtualization. I have VMware, I have Hyper-V, I have a cloud, okay? Do I? Yes and no. Sure, virtualization is a necessity for today's lives, okay? And uh, it kind of powers most of the clouds as we understand them, even those public ones. But recipe of the true cloud, those three things I, I mentioned in, in the second slide, this recipe contains much more elements than just a virtualization. Virtualization is just one piece, one container in this car big cargo ship, which we call cloud. And you need automation, you need uh, resource uh, management, many, many, many things beyond virtualization. Um, so cloud, virtualization doesn't equal cloud but cloud does include virtualization. Public is the only cloud. That's another thing sometimes somebody mentioned. Yeah, Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services, Google also has some, IBM Bluemix. All these are examples of public clouds. And public clouds do indeed provide probably one of the most, you know, extensive cloudification capabilities for you. Why? Because any major cloud provider is much larger than you, than any one of us here. And it means that this el elastic capability, capability to be, to, to expand as you want to, you know, get smaller if you need, is maximized in, in the case of the cloud, because otherwise you still do need to procure hardware, right? But at the same time, having said that, you can leverage many of the cloud benefits like automation, uh, many other th things. Also, if you implement these paradigms, elastic, metered for consumption, even for your internal people. Always instantaneous availability in your private data center, which is called private clouds or hybrid clouds. So don't limit yourself only to thinking to pu public cloud. This is very popular. Cloud is cheaper. Cloud is more expensive. Can you answer this question? for your own company, for your own products. How many users, employees, whatever, I will have in a year from now? Is there a person in this audience who knows the answer to this question? What systems, either in-house or for customers, will I need to run next year? How many new projects will be launched when somebody from marketing department will come to me and ask me to do some new fancy stuff? Do they tell me in advance a year, a month, a week? They just come. But if I would know all these answers, on-prem or, or private cloud would be probably the cheapest option if we look only at the cost because public, well, I mean, cloud is much more than just about uh, costs. 
But if I would have a complete certainty about the future, then probably, you know, procuring hardware by myself would be the cheapest um, option I would take. But I'm a real guy, and, and most of us are here, and I don't have a crystal ball. I can start small with cloud, and especially with public cloud, and I can either grow if I do get those new users, or if I need to learn from failure, I can just simply switch it off. And I don't have any leverage in terms of piles of hardware, uh, you know, where I have invested some money. So it's neither cheaper nor expensive. Public cloud is not secure. And we'll have an next speaker who will address this in more details from uh, compliance also perspective. But what is insecurity? Let's be honest. If we feel insecure, most of the time it implies that we just don't know what will happen to us. Because if we would know, we could kind of protect ourselves, right? And in case of cloud, especially public cloud, yes, we do delegate some responsibility to, to the service provider. That's true. But at the same time, threats landscape is the same. It doesn't matter. And uh, which brings me to the issue of selecting cloud vendor. It does indeed matter whom you trust your workloads, whom you trust your customer data, your own data. But let's be honest. Certification obviously is not the decisive, uh, you know, the only thing you need to think about when uh, trying to secure your, uh, your data, your systems. But again, do we know many, you know, conventional hosting providers who comply with all these certifications? Not so many, actually. So again, it's neither more secure nor less secure than, than you know, conventional stuff. And sometimes people think that if you build something for cloud, it's, it's, it's no different. The truth is that, yes, you can lift and shift some workloads, even though Michael mentioned that, you know, uh, moving email server in the cloud, it's nothing big, right? It's very relevant and, and from the cost perspective, uh, very practical step many companies take. But um, you can lift and shift into the cloud what you have today. But true cloud benefits come when you specifically design your systems for the cloud. And there are few most important design patterns, design paradigms that are different, again, from, from our own sometimes painful experience, which uh, when you in the past you've designed things for, you know, conventional enterprise stuff where you always have you know, Ethernet plug, plugged in, always network available. For the mobile especially, and for the cloud environment, it's, it's totally different. For on-prem you build, for high availability, you, you know, you buy hardware, you ensure clusters are there, and for static resources, you have your service, right? In the cloud, it's much more about resilience and elastic disposable resources. What this means is that in the cloud, when you design truly for the cloud, you or your development te team or your development partner needs to understand that even what you think won't break, will break. And nevertheless, your workload needs to be up and running. And it's possible, it's specifically one of the reasons why cloud is so important and, and good for many of us, which is much more, you know, difficult to achieve with on-prem, even if you would try. But full, trying to f fulfill my promise, leaving five minutes for questions, there is a famous saying which is used across various lean startup uh, books and things which I think is attributed to, to Brad Smith from Intuit. Intuit uh, is still a billion dollar company doing uh, 
accounting and tax uh, software and stuff. And he said once that you should fall in love with the problem, not the solution. And sometimes when I say what is written on the next slide, people stare at me and don't understand what, what I'm trying to say. Is it, is it true? Is it what, I was, what I'm trying to say? But the most important, the, the best advice beyond cloud washing, that cloud is the best, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, the best advice I can give you really to leverage cloud possibilities is this one. Please don't care if it's cloud or not. Yes, you need to build trust with your, with your vendors, with your cloud vendor, if you eventually go for the cloud. And let the best solution win. Whenever we start narrowing our options so early in the process, when we're just dreaming about requirements, what we want to build, why we want to build, for whom we want to build, and from the day zero, if we narrow down to the on-prem or, or cloud, it brings us a lot of problems. The most natural fit, always, in all the examples we've had so far, is when customer doesn't care if solution would be running on the cloud or on the prem. Because eventually, it's a matter of your users matter of the workflow of the system of the business processes that you're working obviously complying to legal stuff and and limitations that sometimes do exist there especially for government organizations but again please don't care and you will see and you will see the best solution delivered to you which might not be the cloud but from my experience again since the is very little certainty, not only here in Latvia, but elsewhere in the world, cloud is relevant, I would dare to say, at least in 80% of the cases, those 20% leaving to the you know, strict limitation about uh, legislation and stuff. So as startling as it might be surprising, my best advice to you, when somebody tries to, to, sell, come to comes to you and tries to sell cloud, Please don't care if it's cloud or not. And this was the, the most important slide I had. I will switch on my microphone. It's on. Well, um, I happily announced that uh, we have uh, a good internet connection now. So if we could use the Slido uh, application right now, if you could have any questions, or we can have an... Uh, I actually tried to use it, and it actually does work. Uh, the problem is that the my, my question is the only one, and it's not about any substance. Any questions, Tigers? Uh, so please log on. Remember ID 2016. Uh, choose the main hall, and uh, we will have, hopefully, Questions popping on because I have people uh, logging on. Um, anyone wants to uh, do the questioning in the uh, in the old way? Uh, any hands? Any uh, anyone willing to ask? Okay, uh, so type in your questions in Slido while Igor tells us. I mean, you have been and and your colleagues have been around this town with the story of the cloud for for a number of years already. Well, what would your assessment be of the sort of state of industry in Latvia? How, well, have we made that transit? Well, when you compare it to, I don't know, Estonia, Lithuania, whatever other countries, what is the shape of, uh, you know, our industry uh, in, in Latvia in, in, in this regard? How many enterprises have transited to that um, service? Well, if we speak about adoption of the cloud capabilities, yeah. I, I, I won't probably be able to comment on whether or not somebody could hope to create really a cloud here in Latvia in, in the sense of uh, hosting. But from our, what we see from our customers that these more, you know, constrained economic uh, um, environment that we 
have faced in, in the uh, last years has pushed our customers into direction, you know, in, into opening their minds, really opening possibilities on-prem cloud, don't care, I just need the best solution. And it's starting to get the traction. Oh, yeah. And as, as I mentioned, this example is a real example, uh, also one of the examples here from Latvia, it's not from Silicon Valley or elsewhere. And um, the, the thing to understand that you can legally and technically leverage cloud capabilities today, whether it's as simple as using your smartphone or your email, or, or a Slido when it works, <laughs> Uh, or doing some more complicated stuff. Uh, it's available here today, and customers are more and more asking for this. As a side note about Slido and why cloud is important, on a much less scale, obviously, but this example in, in this room with Slido tells also one very important uh, lesson. Because you need to be able, when you launch some product, when you launch some service, you need to be prepared both for unplanned scale of activity from the, your customers and also be efficient to not overpay for the hardware and capabilities if you don't have those users. Because what happens, I'm happy that Eric yes. and, and Max has, has, have joined us, but usually if somebody, something doesn't work, when you try it, what you do, you just leave it alone and you don't come back again. So the cloud, elasticity of the cloud allows you to answer that. Okay. Boy, this is, the last one is for me on, uh, on IT jokes. Uh, well, I, I will think of some. Thank you for this. Uh, I have some in my pocket, but uh, I will prepare that. But, uh, so, just, you have a couple of minutes left. So, uh, if you could uh, use, I think, uh, yes, we got two likes for the two questions from Max and from Eric's, if you could uh, tackle these. So how to best start exploring cloud opportunities for a business with a low level of IT integration? Uh, you know, the level of IT integration doesn't matter so much. It's always the question, what is your core business, what you do? It's much more important. If you bake a bagel, you bake a bagel. If, if you are a uh, you know, financial institution, you are a financial institution. The, it's, it doesn't matter so much. But in general, you should take small steps first. And then once you see, when you open your eyes, when you see the, the data that you can get, the capabilities that you can get, then you will be able to formulate you know, the vision forward. Don't try to specify you know, five years in advance full software requirements document for your cloud solution. Take iterative approaches. Start with something smaller. Maybe, for example, like tracking your mobile workforce just with the help of smartphone. And then, you know, take next steps onwards. Yes. And, uh Another 30 seconds, we could tackle Eric's questions. Cloud better fits specific applications. What is the next best use case for cloud? And then I will get to the IT joke. I, would, I wouldn't say that cloud better fits only specific applications. Cloud can be, again, cloud can be email. Cloud can be your line of business application in the cloud, running in the cloud, but Getting back to the second slide I was showing you, to me, in environment where there is huge uncertainty, where you can't predict exactly what you will need to supply to your business, to me, I don't care if it's cloud or not. And again, the best advice I can give you when somebody tries to you and asks to deliver a certain workload, don't start this journey by classifying cloud or not cloud. Keep your options open as far as you can, and then the magic will work. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Agar. Best part in Riga. That's yes. Thank you.